So one of the most common questions that I'm asked is how to take a mar set of MARC records and edit them in the MARC editor, and what functions are available. Um, given that YouTube only allows me 10 minutes, this is going to be a very quick overview of what's available in the MARC editor and how you do this. There's documentation in the MARC editor help file that shows more extensively how this is done, and if you need help, you can always contact uh, the author directly and get information that way. So the first thing we need to do is we need to break a file. So I have the file here of MARC records. I'm going to load it into the MARC editor. And there's a couple of things to notice right away. The first one is this bar here. This is a special notation that tells you that this record's been loaded into MARC at its preview mode. Um, this is important. MARC edit as of the 5.0 version implemented what's called a preview mode. This loads a snippet of a record set um, for preview. Now, what this does is it gives you the ability to edit um, files of any size. So if you have a 5 gigabyte file, you can load it into the MARC Edit Preview Mode. You can edit that entire file, even though you're only seeing a snippet of it in the preview mode, um, and use the MARC Editor to do that in a visual environment. If you don't use the preview mode, then there's a physical limit in terms of how much uh, data can be added to the MARC Editor for editing. Um, that's a half gigabyte, 500 megabytes outside of the preview mode can be loaded into the Mark Editor. So if you don't use the preview mode, there's a physical cap in terms of the size of data that can be edited in the Mark Editor. If you don't like the preview mode, you can turn it off completely under Tools, um, Options, the Mark Editor tab. Right here under Use Preview Mode, uncheck that. The preview mode no longer will be used. If you want to have a larger preview mode than the one megabyte default that's provided, you can change the preview mode size, the amount of data to be pulled in in the snippet. Or, like here, you can make it smaller if you don't want to see the uh, preview mode, or if you don't want to see the larger file but are content with just the preview of the record. Um, if, for example, you open, you're using the preview mode, but you have a small record set like this and you want to be able to see the whole thing, you can click on this link, load entire file. Then the entire file then is loaded, and it doesn't use the preview mode for this individual file. Uh, Mark Edit has a number of editing tools. Under Edit are the general editing tools, so you have normal notepad things like copy, cut, paste, clear, um, find, and replace. The replace function is very powerful because you have regular expressions based on the Perl regular expression syntax, so there are some slight differences. Um, these are noted in the help file in terms of where you can get help on additional uh, advanced topic information using the regular expression engine. Um, additional tools under the edit. There's inserting control numbers, editing 006s, editing and inserting 008s. Um, all of these, in, these are um, special control fields. This will provide you with a form, uh, for example, that shows you what information needs to be entered to be able to add an 008 or an 006 to a record in a, in a simple way. Other tools. In the tools category, you can, you can use uh, Kyle Banerjee's cataloging calculator to get cutter information. Control numbers. Generate control numbers for the entire file. There's constant data forms. There's macros that you can utilize and create. You can validate records using a, a, a short validation. It's basically a mark structure validation. You can dedupe records, dedupe them on a control field. This is the field of your choice. These are the ones that are seeded, but you can basically input any control number field here. And then you can dedupe on a transaction date. So for example, the 005 in an, o in an OCLC number, um, which notes when transactions occurred. You can remove the duplicate items. You can print out just the unique items. You can save duplicate items to another file. Additionally, we have tools for normalizing MARC records. These will normalize records using the old Library of Congress MARC record MARC breaker format so that it will work within the, uh, the MARC editor. You can generate MARC records from URLs. Um, there are functions to add fields, add delete fields, to edit indicators, subfields, to sort. This, these sort functions allow you to sort either individual records or sets of records. This sort by control number, title, author, call number, these sorts, this sorts the set of records. It will put the set of records in order of either control number, title, author, or call number. Sort by XX fields, sort by all fields, or sort by custom fields. These sort individual records. 
and will sort the records, um, sort the numeric uh, fields into um, some kind of a sort order depending on what uh, parameters you've set up. Um, just to look, this is what the add the field looks like. Um, simple to use. You basically just enter in the field number. Don't forget your indicators if you need them. A delimiter that you're going to put this under, and then the information that you want to add. Add the data there. Here, change the types of additions that you want to make, and then when you're done, you can delete data the same way. You could delete your field. Um, edit subfield data. This allows you to edit data within specific subfields. So, for example, if I wanted to change a 260 subfield C looking specifically for a 1942 and replacing it with 1940, I can do that. Hit the replace button. I've done 32 replacements. Look down here. You can see this used to say 1942 and now it's been switched to 1940. Regular expressions are available in this tool in this particular function. So you can do regular expressions um, against individual subfields. There's the ability to edit individual edi uh, indicators as well as swap field data. The important thing to note about the swap field data function is that indicators must be assigned. So um, you have to tell it what kind of indicators are going to be used um, to do the swaps. But if you don't care, just enter asterisks in both places. That basically says any indicators. You can copy the source file. If you don't check this copy source, it'll delete it from this, the original field that you're swapping from. If you check that, it'll just copy it. This add to existing field. This will add data to an existing field rather than um, creating a new field for your data. There are some other tools, reports. The ability to better generate a field count for your records. It will tell you all the information. It will let you export and generate reports. Um, you can also get information about yeah. specific fields by clicking on the field itself, right-clicking, and getting a count of the individual subfields within that record set. So, interesting tool for being able to do some inf get some information about a particular set of records. Um, lastly, there's plugins. These are helper tools that are used to do edits um, and bring information into the Mark Editor generally. So for in this case, it would take things from the Biblios platform and bring them into Mark Editor for editing. But there are also tools for using connections, connect, doing batch edits of connections, connections, OCL connection, and whatnot. So this is the this is a very basic overview of some of the functions you'll find in the Mark Editor. You can look these up in the help file, um, but uh, I think this will gives you an overview of how this, the use might work. Now when you're done editing the process for editing, getting these records back into Mark. You either click on this button that says Compile Records, or down here you'll find in the, the file menu a little function that says Compile File to Mark. Use either of those and your record will go from this mnemonic format back into Mark, which can be loaded into your uh, library catalog.